This is a Dell Inspiron 9300, hailing from the year 2005. This was during an era where laptops were expected to be thick and heavy, and this was no exception. With a 17 inch screen, weighing in at almost 8 pounds, it isn't exactly something you'd want to be bringing everywhere. However, this obviously wasn't in its intended purpose, as many reviewers at the time touted this as a desktop replacement machine. Which is super bold to say about any laptop. Don't be fooled though, this isn't a monster powerhouse like some high-end machines were, rocking desktop Pentium 4s. This uses fairly standard parts, including a Pentium M740 processor running at 1.73 GHz and an ATI Radeon X300 with 64MB of DDR VRAM. The CPU was upper mid-range back in the day, however, the graphics card not so much. You see, the X300 was a desktop card based on the Radeon 9550 from two years before this laptop came to market. But even then, it was fairly entry level, and 64 megabytes of VRAM wasn't amazing back then, and it's aged even worse over time. Aside from that, I maxed out the memory at 2 gigabytes of DDR2, which should give us some nice wiggle room for modern applications. As for storage, though, this wasn't really proper, given that the owner, the old owner, took out the hard drive, and I discovered that it was not a SATA interface. And I subsequently discovered that I need this obscure piece of plastic to get Dell's proprietary slot working. But there's no way I was going to risk buying a 15 year old hard drive off the internet. So I basically found the cheapest way possible. Which ended up being buying this IDE to SD card adapter for 11 bucks online. An absolute bargain if you ask me. However, if you haven't realized the problem already, don't worry, I didn't either. This SD card adapter is nowhere near the size of a regular 2.5 inch hard drive. Which means that this could be uh, pretty impossible to get out, even I can get it in in the first place. But before we install Windows, this laptop needs a good cleaning, which seems very necessary given the large dust bunnies built up in the vents and fans. Now, while we're cleaning this laptop, I think I'd talk a little bit more about it. Something I find really interesting about laptops from this time is how much space there is just inside the laptop. I understand that engineering hadn't gotten to a point where they could more efficiently make use of space, there are like pockets up here where you could like shove cash or like little packets of cocaine if you really want, probably. And I find it kind of funny because in the modern era we have super space efficient laptops like the new MacBook Air and the Dell XPS, one of the most dentist laptops on the market. However, it's probably better that we have all the empty space inside the laptop or else it would probably be even heavier than it currently is. That's nasty. Also, small note about this chassis, this uh, matte finish you saw on the outside might have been a bit deceiving, but this laptop is actually entirely metal, at least the base is, top isn't. This is entirely magnesium metal and it does, it doesn't move. <laughs> so yeah, pretty incredible stuff, but anyway, let's, let's get this laptop back together.
Yes, indeed, what you just saw there was me putting back the CPU heatsink without any thermal paste, but I actually didn't have any around, and whatever was on the CPU seemed to be keeping it cool, so I don't really care. Anyways, after good cleaning, this laptop is looking pretty nice. The front buttons, trackpad, and keyboard are in really good condition. The keyboard itself is really nice to type on in my opinion, but the trackpad does leave something to be desired. It's laughably small, especially for a 17 inch notebook, and the surface is plasticky with more friction than I like. However, there is one feature I find really cool on it. See the graphics on this trackpad? Turns out they're not all just for show. If you have the correct input drivers installed, this actually acts as a one finger scrolling mechanism, which is actually pretty amazing stuff for 2005, given that the alternative was to like grab the scroll bar with your cursor and try to use that. I imagine this would have been really useful, and I don't actually know why we don't see it in laptops today. I'm certainly impressed by it, but it might just be because I haven't seen that feature before. Anyways, the buttons below the trackpad are pretty nice. They control your media, play, pause, your volume up and down, and they glow blue when you press them. If you got this laptop in the media center configuration, imagine this would have made a pretty sweet media machine, which is actually what Dell marketed this as. With that said though, viewing media is less than optimal on this. The screen is dim, and the classic viewing angles of the TN panel are present. The colors actually aren't too bad, but the lacking backlight ruins it. Not all is lost if you can get over that, and the screen is 1440 by 900 which is higher than HD and doesn't look half bad at the screen size. It's a, it's a 16 by 10 screen though, which means that videos will run in a bit of a box. On the outside of this laptop, this thing is absolutely loaded with ports, with 6 USB 2.0s, an SD card reader, FireWire, dedicated mic and headphone jacks, VGA, DVI, S-Video, Ethernet, and fax, and finally, a DVD drive. For audio, there are two speakers up front, and a downward facing subwoofer. This makes music punchy and warm sounding, although the sub distorts easily at high volume. As for battery, this laptop basically might as well not have been one, given that it refused to charge either battery I have on hand. I hoped that a BIOS update would fix this, however, Windows requires a battery to be plugged into Flash to BIOS, which makes enough sense, but it's the perfect thing to go wrong to solve an issue like this. Getting over the fact that we have to have this attached to the wall at all times, this actually makes a pretty decent productivity machine. The keyboard is nice, and the tell screen makes typing up documents a breeze, given you can get over how slow Google Docs is on this thing. However, the internet in general is just unusable on this thing. If you remember back in 2017, my Dell Inspiron E1505 could barely handle 720p video. However, this thing does 144p maybe in Firefox. And this kind of makes sense if you understand that that was a dual core machine, and it was reviewed over three years ago. Well, this one is even weaker with one core, and will only have one core ever since it only supports Pentium Mammoths. Modern web pages are just too bloated for this laptop to handle. However, the Wi-Fi card in this thing actually was the high end at the time, meaning a maximum speed of 54 megabytes per second, more than enough for a laptop like this. Closing down our web browser though, let's see how this thing games. I only have a few games, but encountered issues with a few. Midstown Madness, a 1999 title, ran acceptably well at the laptop's native resolution and everything set to ultra, although it would have run quite correctly. There was a huge input lag and spikes like the keyboard was frozen for some reason. No hands on the keyboard, just... What? <laughs> Half-Life is a different story though. For some reason, it didn't want to run in a resolution higher than 768p, let alone its full resolution. However, that wouldn't, I wouldn't even want to see how that would perform, given it performed very poorly in these conditions. Which is kind of disappointing given that this graphics card is 6 years newer than the game and has more VRAM than recommended. In intense fight scenarios, you might have been getting 20 frames per second. If anybody knows what happened in either two game, I'd actually like to know to give this laptop a fairer chance. Okay, so I was gonna try uh, Mech Warrior Mercenaries, but it literally just like won't work. So, yeah. 
I also tried to play Hard Truck on this laptop, however, it just literally wouldn't work. The music kept playing as I was shutting down oh the computer. Oh my gosh, what? Simple games from the 90s though, like Pandora's Box, actually work perfectly fine with this machine though, and are quite fun to play. It's worth noting that I'm actually planning on doing a few upgrades to this laptop, including a new graphics card and CPU. In fact, I actually have the graphics card right here, but I'm still waiting for our CPU, but I'll do a video when I get that. One interesting thing about this laptop is that even at full tilt while gaming or, you know, playing a YouTube video, it actually stayed surprisingly quiet. I think the DVD drive is the loudest thing on here. The fans barely ramped up at all. In addition, the bottom side of this laptop stayed decently cool, which is a far cry from my old Inspiron, which ramped up regularly. Of course though, with two fans and the very fairly beefy cooling system, it's not really much of a surprise. Something interesting worth noting is that this type of configuration that I have, 1GB of RAM, the CPU and graphics card, would have actually cost well over 3 grand adjusted for inflation. And I only know this laptop is a top end model because the Wi-Fi card in here is a bit better than the rest of them. They all actually featured the same CPU, with only the differences being hard drive and RAM size. In conclusion though, I think this laptop definitely lives up to its desktop replacement moniker Dell gave it back in 2005. With its easily upgradable parts and supreme build quality, I imagine professionals would have really liked this machine if they couldn't afford, say, a Dell XPS. I imagine professionals would have really appreciated the easily removable batteries and huge selection of I.O. given this laptop. Some Apple laptops at the time had you disassemble them or use some type of screw to undo the batteries. However, the one unfortunate thing, of course, is that we can never upgrade this laptop to a Core 2 Duo, which would have been one of the best CPUs you could get after the year 2005. With two cores, it's basically doubled the performance of all the previous CPUs, making your investment not worth a whole lot. However, that just might have been a sign of the times. Think about it this way, back in the early 2000s, we were expecting graphics cards to have double the VRAM every generation. We were expecting CPU performance to double every generation. However, a lot of people just needed laptops right now, so this might not have been too big of a deal for them, especially considering that most applications were more lighter weight back then. Now, I got this laptop from a friend, and I can't say exactly how long this laptop was in service for. However, I've heard stories about these laptops trying to run Windows 7 and 8, which means that it could have been up to 5 or 6 years. Anyway, so this has been the Dell's Run 9300 from 2005. It's Kauchi, and I'll see you guys in the next one.